Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday and welcome to Lake Fenton United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Vincent Slocum. Now, whether you're joining us in worship here for the first time or whether you're a longtime member of Lake Fenton United Methodist Church, I invite you this morning, if you're joining us on our Facebook stream, take a minute to, to introduce yourself. Greet one another on the comment stream below. Allow us to, to welcome and greet one another properly, even though we can't be together in person. Let's, let's be together in spirit here this Sunday morning. Now this morning we're going to continue my, my eight-part series I've, I've called Theological Bookmarks. For the past couple of weeks, the congregation has, has heard stories of some of the, the, the not-so-spectacular and, and maybe some good stories of, of academic encounters that myself and, and my family have had over the years. And, and I hope that I've emerged none the worse for wear for, for those stories. So. So in the next couple of weeks, you're going to hear some stories from my professional career, stories that have helped to shape my theology and, and my beliefs as a Christian and, and as a minister. And I, I hope that you'll continue to show me the same grace and, and compassion as, as you have, have amply shown in just the past couple of weeks. Now, I realized after, after finishing the recording for my last worship service that I completely forgot to include our call to worship in, in our last video. And, and for that, I'm, I'm going to have to apologize. So, so we're going we're gonna to start over here, right? Again, I would like to get us started with, with a simple, a short and sweet traditional call to worship. All right. So in just a minute, I'm going to say this is the day that the Lord has made to which I would like for you to respond. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All right. So we'll, we'll give it a we'll give it a practice run. Right. So we're we're out of practice here. Right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. All right. All right. So now now that we've we've got that down, right, let's let's do it for real this time. All right. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. At this time, I'd like to invite June Wesh to help us to begin our worship and song. But before I do, I have to tell you. June has been so gracious and patient with me in helping to identify the best songs for worship over the past few weeks. I've been so grateful to benefit from her compassion and, and her passion for music. And, and I think that we've all benefited from those gifts in, in worship these past few weeks. And so I'm glad to report that June has graciously agreed to continue sharing her gifts with us in the, in the coming weeks so that we can continue to enjoy the high caliber of music we have enjoyed these past few weeks. That will continue because of the gracious spirit of June Wesh and the many others who have stepped up to make that music possible. Um, I would also be remiss if I did not acknowledge our, our incomparable Margaret Danks, who has time and again stepped up at a moment's notice and, and been willing to come up and record additional music. All of this has been made possible thanks to, thanks to Lake Fenton members like Margaret, June, and Huey from last week. Thank you. So please listen for the voice of God in June's song as we begin our worship here with a hymn of worship. For those of you who are interested in following along, June will be singing What Wondrous Love Is This? It's number 292 if you have a hymnal at home. I encourage you to sing along if maybe it's not too embarrassing for you to do so.
thank you so much, June, for agreeing to share your song with us again this Sunday. Now this morning, I'd like to add a new element to our, our online worship service. One of the ways that we as a community of believers remain connected to one another, both globally as well as across time, is by sharing in the recitation of creeds. Now the Apostles' Creed is one of the oldest creeds in the entire Christian church. When we share in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we are not only connected in reciting those words with all of those around us as a community of believers, but we are also connected to all of those who have come before us, who have been so instrumental in shaping the church that we know and love. And so this morning, I invite you all to join with me in sharing the Apostles' Creed, which will appear on your screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Lake Fenton United Methodist, we have another week behind us now, and we come to yet another Sunday. Now, maybe your week was a week of rest. Maybe your week was a week of joy. I know several people who are just coming back from vacation, in which case maybe you are feeling very full in this, more, in this moment. Maybe your week was a week of stress. Maybe your week was a week of, of worry and and trial and struggle, and maybe it was the kind of week where nothing really worked out. Truthfully, I had a little bit of both this week. But whatever week you've had, whatever you've been carrying around in your heart, whether it's a petition or thanksgiving, I invite you to bring it forth, offer it to Jesus in this moment, and join with me in a time of prayer. God of grace and love, we come to you at the end of a long week. When we turn on the news, when we see the headlines, Lord, we are beset with discord, with strife, with division. We find ourselves in the throes of a tempest we call pandemic. Without any clear understanding of where we go from here. Lord, we are weary, our bodies, our hearts, and our souls are tired. With every fiber of our being, we reach out to you. Lord, here in this moment, we remember that you are present with us even now, wherever we are. As we gather together remotely, you are present with us and connecting us through your Holy Spirit. Lord, in a time of discord, in a time of division, we ask that you fill our hearts and fill our minds with your love and your grace. May, they, may you make of our hearts and our souls sacred and holy temples to your love. And through our actions and our words, may we be vessels and vehicles of your love amongst our families, our friends, and our communities. Lord, we ask all of these things in the words that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, Lake Fenton United Methodist, I'd like to thank you once again to all of you who have so faithfully continued to send your tithes and offerings into the church. At the bottom of your screen, once again, you will see the mailing address for the church. For those of you who are interested in supporting our ministry, I encourage you to mail in a check. I am also happy to report that this week we now have an online giving option available for those of you who would prefer to set up donations through a credit or debit card. On your screen, you should see a link to our PayPal account where you can go and set up donations. You should be able to set up either one-time or recurring donations if you would like for that to be a recurring tithe or offering that you would like regularly and automatically and securely taken out. All of those funds go to supporting our ministry and making sure that we can continue to be a source of, of Christian ministry and fellowship in our community. Now this morning, I, I want to share a story with you as well. When it came time for us to explore options for doing an online worship, as, as a group of Lake Fenton leaders came together and said, you know, we really want to have some kind of credit or debit card option available, we, we all agreed that that was a good thing. And then, and then we all collectively scratched our heads as we, as we struggled to figure out, all right, well, then how do we go about doing that? And, and in the midst of all of that confusion and, and uncertainty, Patricia Whitaker generously agreed to step up. She just happened to be, she wasn't even formally a part of the meeting, just happened to be listening as, as her mother, Karen, was, was joining the meeting. And from the background, we all heard Trisha generously jump up and agree to volunteer to set up the online payment option through PayPal. She even went so far as to say, once it's set up, I will make the first contribution. Lake Fenton, it is a testimony to who we are as a congregation that these are the young people who come from our church. These are the young people who are growing up, and these are the people that they grow to be. Tricia, thank you so much for your generous spirit and your faithful stewardship of our church. Lake Fenton, thank you for all of the ways that you have and continue to give. Lake Fenton, at this time, I'm so excited to introduce you to my wife, Carmen Slocum, who will be sharing our scripture reading today from the book of Ruth. Now, this reading is a little bit longer than I usually like to go on, on scripture readings, but it's an absolutely beautiful story. It's, the book of Ruth is, in fact, my daughter Emily's favorite story in the entire Bible. So I encourage you all to, to listen for the word of God in today's reading. And please join me in, in warmly welcoming my, my wife, Carmen. Good morning, Lake Fenton. I'm looking forward to meeting and getting to know all of you. Um, and today my reading is from the book of Ruth, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation Bible. Now there was a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked his foreman, who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, she is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. 
She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, stay right here with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young women working in my field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked. I am only a foreigner. Yes, I know, Boaz replied but I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I wanna tell you guys about David. I first met David about eight years ago. I was an undergraduate at the time, and to fill out my resume, I'd taken an internship with the city of Flint in their Office of Planning and Development. Uh, David was a homeless man that would hang out in front of the building and fish cigarette butts out of the ashtray. I was still a smoker at the time. I'm, I'm happy to report that I have since quit, and it's been almost four years now since my last cigarette. But, but at the time, I was still smoking about a pack a day, and it was during my many daily excursions out to the front of the building to have a cigarette that I would encounter David. We fell into a kind of pattern, David and I did. He would, he would come up to me and, and ask if I had any change, and sometimes I did, and, and other times I didn't. And, and then he would ask me if I had any cigarettes that I could spare, and, and I would sigh. And, and I'd do the whole smoker thing where I padded all of my pockets as though I didn't know exactly which pocket that pack of cigarettes was in, and and exactly how many cigarettes were in it. And then I would, I would take my, my cigarettes out and, and open it up and pretend to weigh the gravity of, of what I was about to sacrifice in that moment. And more often than not, I would, I would give him a cigarette or two. That was how it went most days with, with David and I. Now, one day I decided I wanted to do something really nice for David. I had just recently been promoted from unpaid intern to full-time planner for the city of Flint, and, and I was feeling pretty, pretty good in, in that moment. And, and as fate would have it, I came to work and had $20 in my wallet, and I thought, you know, when I go outside, I'm, I'm going to give this whole 20 to David, right? I mean, that's just going to make his day. He's going to hit the roof. And so I took my 20 out of my wallet and I went into my office and I, I folded it up very, very neatly. And I, I put it in this little pocket right here on my jeans that really isn't good for anything other than pocket knives or, or, or $20 bills. And, and when it came time, I, I went outside and, and there was David. And sure enough, he came up to me and, and asked if I had any change. And man, I hit the stance and I, I took out my $20 bill and I handed it to him. I was like, you know what, David, I got you today. Here you go. And I handed it to him. Right? I was so excited. And he took the $20 bill and, and he looked at it and he, he put it in his pocket with his, with his head down and just, and just said, well, thanks, man. It's... You got any cigarettes? And I thought, thanks, man. Thanks, man. I just gave you $20. That feels like King's ransom for the dude who's fishing cigarette butts out of the ashtray. Thanks, man. Can I have a cigarette? I was a little miffed. And so I, I padded my pockets and I, I took out my cigarettes and I, I gave him a couple and, and just went back into my office. You know, that was that was enough for me. And that was that was it that day with with David. Now, 
A couple of weeks, I ha- a couple of weeks later, I had another encounter with David. I was I was headed out to the lobby of City Hall, where there was a little snack kiosk across the hall from the water department. I, I wanted to get myself a little something to drink while I was while I was on break. And as fate would have it, David was in the lobby that day instead of out in front of the building where he usually stood and and sure enough when he saw me he came up to me and and said hey you got you got any change that you can spare and and i was still a little annoyed about the whole 20 dollar thing and and so i said you know david i i got a dollar 50 in my wallet and i'm gonna get myself a diet coke and and then i'm broke till payday and and that was more or less true and he said, well, are you going outside for a cigarette? And I said, you know, David, I, I smoked my last cigarette on the way into work today. I don't have any for myself, let alone for you. And David stopped. And he looked at me with an expression that I can only describe to you as genuine concern. And I kid you not, without patting his pockets once, he reached down into his pocket and pulled out a full pack of cigarettes, producing not one, not two, but three cigarettes, which he then offered to me. I was shocked. For two years, I'd been standing in front of that building with David. I'd never once seen him with his own cigarettes. I was shocked, and, and if I can be a, a little honest, I, I was kind of grossed out, too. You know, I, I looked at him in the midst of this selfless act, and, and I thought, oh, David, I don't know where you got those from, man. And I don't know what else you got bouncing around in, in those pockets with them. And, and then a thought occurred to me. You see, David had asked if I was going outside to have a cigarette. Now, clearly, he had some of his own, so he wasn't asking me in the hopes that I would give him some of mine, but instead was asking me as as you would a friend or a smoking buddy who maybe just wanted a little company out there. You see, I realized that While David had just been the homeless guy to me, over the course of time, David had come to see us as friends, maybe even smoking buddies. And so I I took the cigarettes from from David and I I held out my hand to to say thank you to him. And and David gave me this beautiful, big smile and and he grabbed my hand and he he tugged me into this really awkward and and kind of aggressive hug and so here I am in the lobby of Flint City Hall in the middle of a very awkward and kind of uncomfortable hug with a man a full foot shorter than I am and about 25 angry customers in the water department for an audience, right? I had never seen him more pleased with himself than he had been in that moment, right? I'd never seen him so excited. (laughs) Now, in today's reading, we hear the story of Ruth and Naomi. Now, as widows, Ruth and Naomi don't have any income on which they can rely, no support on which they can depend. And so when we meet them in today's reading, Ruth is forced to glean in the fields of a man named Boaz. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, gleaning was a common practice in those days. It actually came from a commandment that God had handed down directly to the Israelites in their time in the wilderness. And and what God said in this commandment was, for those of you who are privileged to own fields, for those of you blessed with your own harvests and land, when you're out bringing in your harvest, don't pick every last scrap of grain off the sheaf. When you get to the margins of your field, 
Leave that food there. Instead, let it be for those at the margins of your field, the widowed, the poor, the refugee, and the orphaned. Let that be a source of sustenance for them. Now, God knew exactly what he was doing when he handed that commandment down to the Israelites. You'll notice that he didn't tell them when you're out in your fields, make sure you pick every last scrap of food you can find. Grab every last grain off the sheaf so that you can bring in a bountiful harvest and there'll be lots of food to go around. You see, he doesn't tell the Israelites when you're out in your fields, pick every last grape off the vine, shake every last olive out of the tree. And when you're done, heap them up into a big pile and take one tenth of that pile and, and give it to your church or your, or your synagogue so that they can distribute it among the poor. Instead, what God tells the Israelites when you're out in your fields and you make your way to the margins of your field, don't pick that food at all. Just leave it there. Instead, let those at the margins of your field, the widowed, the poor, the refugee, and the homeless, let them come to you. Let them come on your land and pick that food for themselves. When you are out in your fields working beside your families, let those at the margins of the field come and work side by side with you as equal participants of the harvest. You see, God knew what a pride-swallowing place the world can be for those at the margins of the field. Forced to beg for your bare subsistence and to eke out a living. Forced to live or to die on the kindness or the scorn of strangers. And in the kingdom that God was building through his law, everyone was entitled to the dignity that comes from being able to provide for themselves and for those around them. In the kingdom that God was building through his law, everyone is entitled to the dignity that comes from being an equal participant in bringing in the harvest. Now, one of the things that we don't hear in today's reading is how shortly before arriving in the city of Bethlehem, Naomi changes her name to Mara, which in the Hebrew means bitter. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us an awful lot about why she did this other than to say that the Lord had dealt bitterly with her. However, I think she knew the world to which she was returning. I think she knew that the world to which she was returning would not wish to see her as a friend or as family or as an equal, but rather as a cautionary tale, as a source of pity, as a source of charity. The world to which she was returning would wish to see her Misery as an aspect of her identity. It was not merely a matter of her circumstances, but rather a fundamental aspect of who she was as a person. She was a place where they could bring their offerings, where they could heap their charity. She was somewhere where they could hand their $20 bills, pat themselves on the back, and then walk away. I learned that lesson from David all those years ago, that day in the lobby of City Hall. You see, I realized that when I had made such a show of handing $20 to David, what I had in fact done was to reinforce an imbalance and inequality that existed within our relationship. 
And when David offered me those cigarettes that day in the lobby, what he had in fact done was to reestablish the balance of equity and dignity within our friendship. And in the process had reclaimed some of his own dignity. You see, human love and charity, while an absolutely beautiful and, in my opinion, necessary thing, can often inadvertently cause us to keep those on whom we offer our love and charity at arm's length and sometimes slightly below us. But in today's reading, We learn that God's love, unlike human love, is such that by its very nature, it restores dignity. By its very essence, in acting among us in our communities, it creates equity and restores balance in the relationships around us. After I took those cigarettes from David, I I walked out to the front of the building with him and, and I smoked not one, not two, but all three of those cigarettes. For 20 minutes, I stood out in front of the building with David. We, we joked around, we, we laughed, we talked, just two smoking buddies. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for the blessings of your love and the restorative power of your grace. Here today we remember that you lift up the oppressed, you restore the broken. Lord, we ask that in this time of division and tension, you make us vessels and vehicles in our community of your love and not merely our own. Amen. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Mayer family, Michaela, Aaron, and Jenna, who will be helping us to close our worship in song. Now, Michaela and Aaron have already performed for Lake Fenton at this past year's Christmas program, so they may be familiar. Michaela is a junior at Fenton High School. And Jenna is a recent graduate of Fenton High School who will be going on to study music therapy at Spring Arbor University this fall. I encourage you to be present with God in this time as we enjoy their beautiful hymn. For those of you interested in following along at home, they will be singing Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. It's number 64 in the hymnal book.
Thank you so much, Michaela, Aaron, and Jenna, for helping us to close our worship so beautifully in song. Now, before we close out our worship, I'd like to once again thank all of the musicians who have chipped in over the past several weeks to help create the Christ-filled and, and rich worship experience that we've been able to enjoy. June West, Huey Judson, Margaret Danks, Ruby Todd, Stefan Wilson, and the Mayer family, thank you so much for sharing your gifts with us. Now, for those of you at home watching, we are still looking for musical guests who would be willing to share their talents with us, whether you're a vocalist or a musician, from guitar right on down to tuba, whatever it is that you play, we would love to hear from you and we would love to find a way to incorporate your gifts into our worship service here at Lake Fenton United Methodist Church. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see contact information for the church offices here. Give some thought and prayer into how and if you would like to share your gifts. And please reach out to us. Even if you're on the fence and, and not sure, reach out. We would be happy to, to talk with you and explore ways that, that maybe you are comfortable doing so. Again, thank you, Lake Fenton United Methodist Church, for all of the ways that you have continued to chip in and make worship possible here, even though we worship from a distance. Now this week, I also want to let everyone know that this week we are trying out a call-in option for our worship experience for those who are homebound and may not have access to a computer or internet. We would like to have a call-in option so that individuals can call in and hear the worship as it's happening. So this week we are testing that out to make sure that it works. If it does work, you should be hearing from us later this week with details on how you can access that call-in option. If any of you know someone who is homebound, we are going to work as hard as we can to get that information out to everyone. But I can't promise that there won't be some who won't fall through the cracks. And so if, if, there are those, if you know anyone who is homebound and may benefit from that worship service, I encourage you to share that information with them when it arrives. Later this week, you should all receive a letter outlining all of the, the numerous ways that you can connect with worship in the coming weeks here at Lake Fenton United Methodist Church. All right. so. Now that we've got all of that out of the way, I'd like to, to close us out with, with a word of, of blessing here. May you always find room to make a space for those at the margins of your field, and may your love always be such that it creates dignity and equity in the world around you. And may the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. God loves you, Lake Fenton United Methodist. I love you. Go in peace. <laughs>